All right, kiddos, let's talk on this. Uh, you guys all have this open right here, don't you? I do. Okay, we're going to be putting a lot of stuff in here today, uh, talking about uh, slope intercept form, what it means. Um, we're going to see some stuff that isn't necessarily slope intercept form, and we're really going to use decimals to be able to rewrite stuff in the slope intercept form to answer our questions. And I'll explain to you what slope intercept form is in a second. But uh, of all the sections that we're going to look at today, a lot of a lot of stuff going on here, and I think it's real important that we pay attention on this. So, uh, just taking a look at this right here. In your notes, uh, the title here is called uh, slope intercept form. Now, guys, in this title right up here, there's three words: slope intercept form. What one word up there do we put <coughs> that we really hard look at in the last section? Slope. Look at a lot of slope. And what was your definition of slope again from the previous section? It's a rise over a run, wasn't it? Okay. Now, guys, if you recall, all those points that we had, all those points that we had, thanks. Yeah. Does everybody have notes already? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you recall the last section, every time that we had two points to find slope, we drew a line between them. And that's the same thing we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at graphing linear equations in what we call uh, slope intercept form right here. Okay. Graph linear equations in slope intercept form. Okay. <coughs> now, right here, here's your uh, definition of slope intercept form. It says y is equal to what here, Gary? Okay, you're going to hear this a ton, Mike. You're going to hear this a ton as we run through the rest of this uh, chapter. And, uh, guys, right here, the thing you need to understand is the following it says m is going to represent the what? Remember that formula I gave you where slope was equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1? Do you remember what variable I put way out in front? I said they used the letter m for whatever reason, right? Okay, what's the b say it is here, kiddos? Y intercept. B is the y intercept. So I'm going to do a couple things right here. I want you to do the same thing. Okay. First of all, we know what slope is, right? What we need to understand first of all is what is a y-intercept tied into this? Okay. If I had a coordinate plane that looked like this, you want to draw the same thing. There's your coordinate plane. And if on that you had a line that looked like this, if you had a line that looked like this, there's my line right there, kiddos. If I had two points, could you find a slope on that, first of all? You could, couldn't you? All right, we know how to find slope. The thing that's going to do for us today is called the y-intercept. First of all, I want you to understand what a y-intercept is. Anybody have an idea of what a y-intercept for a line is? So the dot on the y, okay? So elaborate on that a little bit more. I, I agree with what you're saying. So the dot on the y, are you saying, <coughs> actually, why don't you come point to what you think it is, Seth? Is there any specific dot on the y-axis at all when I talk about y-intercept for a line? No, just where the line touches it. Okay, so where the line touches, that's exactly right. What he's saying is this. If I look at this point right here, that point right there, where the red line crosses, what axis is the vertical axis again, guys? The y-axis. We know how to find x and y-intercepts. We've talked about this a little bit before, right? This is considered, this point right here is considered my y-intercept. You guys remember the section where we set x equal to 0 and solve for y? Remember that? And then set y equals 0 and solve for x. You remember that? X and y intercepts. What intercept are we concerned about then today? What's it say? Y intercept. Okay. And then the other thing I want to point out is this. Slope intercept form. Notice the slope intercept form. You remember when I called something function form before? Remember when we got stuff into function form earlier this chapter? Yes? What variable is always alone in function form? What variable is always alone? Not x. Y was always alone. What do you notice about this formula right here? What's alone up here? Y is always alone. Isn't slope intercept form basically a function form because y is all alone right here? Okay, let's find an example up here. Let's do this. 
Suppose you had something like y is equal to 3x minus 7. You're going to get asked an awful lot in these types of problems to identify the slope and identify the y-intercepts. Now, guys, in slope-intercept form, or function form, if you will, y is all alone, what does it say this letter m was equal to? What does it identify? It says right here, m is your what? Slope. Okay. Your slope will always be right next to your variable x. So as I look at this equation in function form or slope-intercept form, if you will, what value is right next to my x? Okay, and what's the numerical value in the example on the far right? What number is right next to x? 3. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say you'll out. Since I'm in function form, y is all alone, I would have to say that in this case right here, my slope is equal to 3. In that mx plus b form, that value right next to x identifies your slope. Now that only works when y is all alone, right? What's the next one? Well, next thing I need to identify is the, what's the name called again? Slope what? Intercept. Specifically which intercept? Y. We're always going to be identifying slope and y-intercept here from now on. Okay. Well, if 3 was my slope, in this equation in slope-intercept form, what value do you think is the intercept then? Seven. Okay, now be careful on the 7 because preceding that 7, the negative sign, right? So what do you think the y-intercept is going to be here? Very good, negative 7. Okay. First of all, you can only get away with identifying 3 and 7 as values for slope. I'm sorry, I should back up. You can only get away with 3 and negative 7 as being slope and intercept. The only time you're going to get away with that is when what variable is all alone in an equation? Y has to be alone. Take a look down below. We'll run into these examples here in a second. I'll show you how to handle them. Are both of those equations in A and B in slope-intercept form? Is the first one in slope-intercept form? We're good here, right? Y is alone. But what about this one? This one has problems here, right? I'll show you how to handle that here in a second. Okay, we're going to shortcut that with your computer a little bit, all right? Okay, so uh, we'll talk about these rules here in a little bit. Uh, you're going to talk about rules to graph stuff here. And um, I'll come back to this in a little bit, but this is very important. So you might want to highlight this, make sure that you're good here. Whoa, oh, I got most. That's pretty cool. I like that. You know what that looks like? It looks like a side of a house. It's right, built in some place that I'll probably never live. Maybe. It looks like a beginning frame of a house or something. Like you just have that one room that's that weird shape. Yeah. It's my lookout tower. Right up here, you talking about this? Yeah, it looks, it looks like a base for a house. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just have that one that you're probably going to put like a wall there so you can like just hide there. That's going to be my lookout tower. I can get all the zombies when I see them coming. When the zombies are coming. RPG! <laughs> if you're ever in zombie apocalypse, head to the closest military base because they have all of those weapons and a tank. That's a good thought. What was that equation I had, guys? Y equals 3x minus what? Was it 3x minus 7 that I put up there? Yeah. I want to show you something real quickly. Guys, y equals 3x minus 7. Just taking a look at this right here. Put this in projector mode so you can see it better. Again, I love decimals for a couple reasons. I come down here, I click on my point right there. Oh my gosh, what does it tell me the y intercept is down here? What does it say the y intercept is down here? What value? So the negative 7 is the y value, right? Y intercept. Guys, if I go back to that equation that we had or the one that I wrote in blue, what did we say the y intercept was in this? Negative seven. If I go ahead and go like this, say, you know what? We said the slope was what? Three. Slope was three. If I go from, let's say, looks like, <clears throat> looks like uh, this is a point right here on the line, isn't it? And this is a point. How far up would I rise to go from the point on the blue to the point on blue? Looks like one, two, three units up, right? And then right how much? You guys agree the slope is 3 over 1? What's 3 divided by 1 equal? 3 
divided by one would be three, right? Doesn't that match my slope value right here? Okay, so real quickly, real quickly, I'm gonna jump down to, uh, I'm gonna jump down to the example I have right down here. Example one, identify a slope and identify a y-intercept. Here's the deal. This works nicely when I'm in what form again? Y-intercept. And what we really want to make sure is things work nicely when we want, we want y to be alone, right? So the first thing you're always going to ask yourself when you're asking slope and intercept is y alone? Well, I don't know. What are the first one? Letter A, is y alone? Is y alone in that first one? Okay, it is, right? Right? So how about a slope for this one? Anybody got a guess on the slope? What value the slope is? Slope is 2. How about the y-intercept? y-intercept would be negative 3, right? Boom! That's easy. It's easy when y is alone, right? Well then, now we have a problem. Now we have a problem. We gotta identify the slope and the y-intercept in part B. Again, what do we want when we answer these questions? What do we want? It's y alone over here. It is not, is it? Okay. Now. We could put stuff back in function form. We could put stuff back in function form, and I want to show you how function form works again. All right. Way back in section 8.2, we talked about function form. We said we have to first of all make sure y is what kind of a y, positive or negative. Is y positive here? It is, right? So he said, once I know y is positive, if y would have been negative, what would I have done to all the signs? Switch them. <coughs> If I want y to be alone and y is already positive, what variable do we need to kick out then? If I take this 4x, which is positive to the other side, 4x would be what kind of 4x over here then? So would you guys agree that I could rewrite this as 3y equals negative 4x? Because if I move this to the other side, instead of being positive, now it'll be what? Negative. negative. And you still have a 9 over here. What kind of a 9? Everybody agree? First question I asked myself is why alone? We said no. Second question we said that we can put it in function form. So we asked ourselves is why positive? It was. So the next thing we did was kick the x to the opposite side. You guys follow along? Follow along? What's in front of the y now? What am I going to have to divide every single part by now? Okay. Divide every single part by 3. If it divides nicely, great. If it doesn't divide nicely, then just leave it as a fraction. Okay. First part on the left. What's going to happen to your y value? I'm sorry, your 3s. They become y. So on the left side, we just have a y. Very good. Is negative 4 divided by 3? Does 3 go into negative 4 wholly? So just leave it as a fraction. Call it negative 1 over what? Negative 4 over 3 times what? 3. X. Okay. You guys okay with that part? How about the last part? 9 divided by 3. 3. So plus what on the end, Tim? Plus 3. Okay. So we had to revisit what it meant to write something in function form, right? We had to revisit what it meant to write something in function form. Okay, so function form is y alone now. And we just said that if y is alone, we have some kind of a slope-intercept form. What's right next to x? What value? Negative 1 over what? Negative 4 over 3. Means rise negative 4 for every run of? 3. three. So what's your slope value going to be here? Um, negative 4 over What's your y-intercept? So why intercept value now at y is alone? Okay. Now again, guys, I'm not going to sugarcoat this at all. This section has a lot of stuff on it. We haven't even 
scrape the tip of the iceberg off of this yet. But one thing that's going to be very important for you is to make sure what? Y we want y to be alone. Okay. Taryn, question? Yeah, for the Want y to be positive, yeah. Okay, so, and, and, and maybe I should make a note up here. I think it was, Mrs. Miller, can you look back in your binder quickly? I'm pretty positive it was section 8.2 that had function form rules in it. Yeah, you're going to want to see your 8.2 notes for function form. So if this is a problem right here, uh, you might want to make a note, if y is not alone, to see your 8.2 notes, okay? And if you need to revisit that, that's, that's online, so if you want to go back and watch that again, that's there, okay? Now, again, there's a lot of stuff going on up here, right? First equation, good or bad? Second equation, good or bad? This one's naughty, you're naughty. But is it manageable? Can you get y alone? Okay, now, again, I'm not telling you, I am not telling you to just punch stuff in and answer your questions. What I'm telling you about Desmos is to say, hey, I think I have an answer. And the nice thing about Desmos and the way we're trying to utilize this is to say, check my answers. Because I should be able to get an answer and then use this to know if I'm right or if I am wrong. Okay? What was the original equation up there, kiddos? 4x plus a y equals 9. Okay, so let me type that in. 4x plus... All right, let's check this out. What did we say the intercept was when we did this? Check my intercept out right there. Oh, were we right on intercept? Okay, how about slope here? Check this out on slope. If I look at my slope, what did we say the slope was? Okay, well, they identified two points in here for us, didn't they? So let's see. First of all, is this a positive slope or negative slope? Is it uphill or downhill? So it's got to be negative, right? What's my rise distance from here to here? Ooh, hang on a second. Did I type that in right? Oh, yeah, we can't go there because that point's not right on a corner, is it? Makes sense. So let me back up. We'll back that up. Undo, undo, undo. Hmm. I have a better idea. <laughs> Looks like this and this would be points right here, wouldn't it? So I'm going to go from here to here. You guys see how that point goes right through the corner of a box? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's my rise here? Count with me. One, two, three, four. Am I moving up or down? Down. So the rise is negative four, correct? How about your run distance, kids? So the slope, rise over run. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, slope, negative 4 over 1 here. 3. Three. Does that match what we found? Yeah. Well, I'll be. So do I know I'm right? Yeah. I'm right. You use that tool right there to take everything you just did, plugged in the original equation after you've done your work, and say, you know what, I can verify those answers now. Right? Okay. Feel okay about this? Again, what's the whole goal? Get what variable alone first? Want y alone, okay? Want y alone, okay? You know why y is always alone? It's got such a split personality. It can't figure out if it's a vowel or a consonant. <laughs> That's why it's always alone. Great, great. Come on, Court. That was good. Fire up on a Tuesday morning. Hey, why is six a part of seven? Because seven, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> That's hilarious. I like that one. That's a good one. Sarcastic. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Page two. On your own. Find what? Y. Slope and y. y intercept. First one, a good one to work with or a bad one to work with? Good. How about the second one? Good one or bad one? Here. Second one's naughty, isn't it? Okay. You may want to call this right here. You may want to call this right here a 1x, okay? 1x. Take a couple minutes.
Okay. Um, Sounds like a good idea. Parallel perpendicular. Yeah. First one, you should be able just to kick right out, right? First one, guys. Um, again, when we're looking for slope and line intercepts, we're identifying an equation right here. When I'm looking for slope and line intercepts to identify, what what one thing do you really want to have to be able to answer the questions? You want function form, don't you? So y has to be alone. You want slope intercept form. Okay, is the first one in slope intercept form? Okay, so this one here, we're good to go. Do we need to change this? The answer is no. So I can just look at this right here and say, okay, I can look at this and say the slope is what value, kids? Negative three. Negative three. Now keep in mind, guys, when we start looking at graphing stuff, if I have a slope of negative three, and as slope is defined as a rise over run, or fraction form, if you will, how else could I write negative three so that it's in fraction form? Negative 3 over 1. So when we start looking at graphing numbers, if we have a whole value right here, that's just like a rise value. We would have to put this over what value to make this a slope um, when we start graphing and get a run value of 1. Now. Okay, so just understand that this is the same as negative 3 <coughs> over what? <coughs> 1. Okay, so either one would work. How about the y intercept on this? Where would this cross the y axis?
kind of poor Mason. Why negative? There's a sign that tells me what kind of four you have. Okay, that's good. That is really good. All right. How about the second equation? Is that a nice equation or a naughty equation? Okay, so we have to get y alone, right? So if I think back to my 8.2 section, okay, here are the questions in order. Is y positive, first of all? No, it's negative, isn't it? So what do I have to do to every single sign here to get y alone? Change it. So negative, I'm sorry, positive 1x shall become? Negative 1x. One. One the negative 2y will become a plus 2y. Everybody agree? And then 10 will become what kind of a 10? Okay, now is y positive? Once y is positive, what variable do I need to kick out of there? And that 1x, which is negative on the left, will be what kind of 1x on the right, Taryn? If it's negative here on the opposite side, it'll be a positive, right? So I'm going to kick this out. So this is gone. It's going to the other side. So we have 2y on the left. What kind of 1x will I have over there now, Taryn? Positive 1x, right? Minus how much? And that's the minus 10 there that's already over there. So all I did, took this negative 1x to the opposite side, threw it in front of the minus 10, became positive 1x minus 10. All agreed? Is y completely alone yet? So what do you have to do now? Just divide by every single part by 2. Help me out. What well, the two is going to do? Y alone? See, one over two, that doesn't bode very well, so if I only leave that as a fraction, one half. So one half times what variable? And then how about the minus 10 divided by two? Minus five. Hey, I've taken something that is what we call standard form and written it in slope-intercept form or function form. Rules for function form. Is y alone now after I've rewritten this? Yeah. Can you identify slope and y-intercept now? Yeah. Raise your hand if you can tell me what the slope is to this equation at this point. Candace, what is it? One half. What's the y-intercept, Mason? Negative five. One half and negative five. So I'm just going to jot those down over here. Slope. One half, right? Y intercept. Y intercept is negative five. Okay. Again, could you use decimals to check to see that you're right? Good. Do I need to do that now? Do you want to do that? I have a question. How many of you are doing that to know that you're right? Are we right? So when you type it in, we're right. Is the y intercept negative five? Oh, holy guacamole. excited about that because it's not Monday. Okay. All right. I think we need coffee. Last example I want to look at is right here. Last example. Do you guys have that down? Yeah. Any questions? What's good to be all alone? Why? Okay. All right. Graph an equation in slope intercept form. This is where things are going to go back to those rules that I highlighted on the first page right there. Okay. Those rules that we highlighted right there. This is going to kind of apply back to that part in example two, and I'm going to write them down. Okay, so what's to say rule one is again here, guys? Plot the y. Plot the y intercept first. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this to graph this. Here's how you graph these. Step one. Step one. We're going to plot the y intercept. So in this case, guys, first of all, is y alone in the equation I'm trying to graph? Okay. Always have to get y alone first. Y is alone. It's in slope intercept form. So what is the y intercept there? Two. Okay. okay, y intercept is two. Everybody agree? Everybody agree too? Okay. So what that means is this. It means get on the y axis right here and go up to what value? Two. And plot it. One, two. Y intercept is two. I know I have a line that's going to cross right there. Okay. Well, if I've identified the y-intercept, what part of slope-intercept form haven't we talked about yet, then? Um, the, the, the slope. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to write down slope 
from your y-intercept. We're going to be right here. It's like I plot that point. It's like you are standing. When you plot that point, it's like you are standing right there. That's where we're standing. Boom. <clears throat> we're going to do our slope from the y-intercept. Okay, now take a look at the slope, kids. What is the slope? Negative 3 over what? Negative 3 over what? 4. Okay, so what this means is this. From the y-intercept, you're going to rise what value? And then you're going to run. Well, it would rise negative. So does that mean I'm moving up or falling down? And then I'm going to run to the right how much? Check it out, guys. This is saying slope, negative 3 fourths. It means... From your y-intercept, rise negative 3. Go down 3 units and then run to the right 4 units. So watch what I do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and then run to the right 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's telling me right there that once I've done that slope from the y-intercept, plot your second point. Right? Plot your second point. Now, you don't have to put that L in there like I did. But, I, 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 you know, look, you understand what I'm doing there, how that negative 3 fourths ties into the y-intercept? Understand how that ties in? Okay, well, once you've got those two points, what am I able to do now? What am I able to do? I'm able to graph it, aren't I? It looks somewhat like this. There it is. Okay, there's my, there's my line. Okay, and if I take the slope away, if I take the slope away, I don't want to take the slope away. I want to take away how I got the slope. That's what it would look like. Okay. Now, do you guys remember when we were doing input and output tables and hitting three points? Remember doing that? That was a lot of work, wasn't it? All of a sudden, I just have an equation right here. I was like, boom, here's the y-intercept. From there, do the slope. I've got my two points, draw my line. We're done. Is that easier or more difficult? More difficult. This is easier or more difficult? This is easier. Remember those T-charts you made? Put in a zero, put in a two, put in a four. Oh, and we had to make sure that they were in a line. Remember that? Mm -hmm. That was tedious, wasn't it? This here is just like, man, this is streamlined. Woohoo! Let's try one together. Let's try one together. Ah, I, I, I got an idea. Cleanness. Somebody give me an equation to graph. The equation? Yep. Um, y equals y squared. Yep. Give me, give me a slope intercept form equation. Y equals Whoa. 9x. Ooh, that's a big slope. Um, Let's go somewhere below 5. 2x plus 3. I like it. I want to graph that. First question, slope intercept form or not? Are we in good shape or bad shape then? Good shape. It's a good start, right? Okay. It's kind of like saying, okay, I'm going to get in a race car. There's a Ford sitting here and a Chevy sitting here. You're in your Chevy right now, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Bratsky, I knew you would agree. <laughs> What's the y intercept, kids? Y intercept is. So rise up how much? Three. You guys agree the y-intercept is going to be right there? Yeah. Now from that point, I need to do what? You need to divide your y-intercept. I already found the y-intercept. It's three right here, right? What's the slope through that point? Two. Two. So what am I going to do? Ooh, two. Let's see, two is a rise over a run. I've only got a rise, just two. How am I going to turn that two into a rise over a run? And two will become... What in slope form? Okay, so from here, rise. Am I going up two or down two? Yeah. Up two. It's positive, isn't it? Yeah. Up two over one. one. Okay, there's your two points. Draw your line. Okay. Somebody remember those two points that I had? 1.0 comma 3, isn't it? Do you remember these points? You guys read this point is 1 comma 5 right here? Right one and up 5. Mason, you remember the points. Oh, God. 0, 3, and 1, comma, 5. You got that? 
Because those are the two points we're going to use to draw our line, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, let me get out of this. You said y equals what value again? One, two, three. Was 2x plus 3, right? Okay, what do we say the points were that we're going to be on this? Good there. Yeah. What was the other one? Zero comma three. Goodness. Isn't that weird how that works out? Yeah. Are the two points that we use that form that line on that line? Was that line two x plus three drawn through those two points? Am I right or am I wrong? Right. I have to be right. Yeah. It has to be right. Okay. When you're graphing stuff, what's the first point you plot? Y-intercept. Y and then from the y-intercept, do your slope. slope to find the second point. Here, we wrote two, three, and one. There's your two points. Draw your line. Okay? Again, this only works if what variable is alone. Okay. I'm going to stop there. We're going to pick up the second half of this tomorrow, so I'm going to go ahead.